So how are we going to compute um, unemployment in our matching model? Um, right, so we know that in the matching model, you know, a key lesson to remember from what we've seen is that everything is determined by the labor market tightness. Okay? Um, so, first question is how do we compute the labor market tightness? And you remember that um, the labor market tightness is determined by uh, an equilibrium condition. So the tightness, actually, uh, in equilibrium, once our model is, if you remember, logically consistent, we want um, the tightness to be such that labor supply is equal to um, labor demand. And if we had something different than that, then the model wouldn't be uh, internally consistent because people would expect something different than what actually happens. And um, if they were making that type of mistake, we would expect that um, well, at first people could think about it and try to realize they're making a mistake and correct it, but even if they didn't realize immediately, the market would adjust, uh, you know, firms would adjust the number of vacancies they post until you get to that point where actually what people expect is what happens and you have this uh, nice internal consistently, uh, consistency. Uh, so the labor market tightness uh, is going to be given by an equilibrium condition. Mind you, the labor market tightness, it's not decided by anyone. It's, it's a variable that aggregates all the decisions by all the actors in the economy. Um, and so it, it's going to be given by this aggregate relationship. You remember that the aggregate, con the equilibrium condition that gives the market tightness, of course, it's very key here, is that the labor supply at theta has to be equal to the labor demand at theta. So this is you know, a key relationship that we always have to remember, let me highlight that. So that's a key equilibrium condition. Labor supply is equal to labor demand at the given tightness. That's going to give us our equilibrium uh, tightness. And that's what we expect to prevail on the labor market. So what does that mean? Uh, what, what's the equation that comes out of that? Well, to figure out what's the equation, we have to uh, put in the expression we had seen for supply and demand. Okay, so labor supply if you go back, we know that it's f of theta divided by s plus f of theta times h, where f of theta, you remember it's a job finding rate, s is a job separation rate, h is the size of the labor force, so that gives us our labor supply, it has to be equal to labor demand. The labor demand, we had computed its value, let's say it was a, the productivity, alpha, and that just reflects the shape of the uh, production function, we have the W, the wage, 1 from the star of theta, alpha, the star of theta is a recruiter-producer ratio, 1 over 1 minus alpha. Okay? So this is, uh, this is therefore our equilibrium condition that gives us uh, the labor market idea. So you can see the only unknown here is uh, the tightness theta. And so this equation, we have one equation, we have one unknown, that this equilibrium condition is going to give us, once we solve for it, it's going to give us the labor market tightness. And here, you know, it's going to define you know, implicitly um, the labor market tightness. This equation defines implicitly um, the tightness Theta. So here I'm saying implicitly because um, the equation doesn't say theta is equal to you know blah 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 something. It's just saying theta has to satisfy this relationship, and that's why it's an implicit uh, definition. In economics, very it's very common to have implicit uh, definition. Nevertheless, although the expression is not explicit, there are many many things we can learn from an ex implicit de uh, definition of a variable. Actually, uh, almost as many things as with an explicit definition. Um, so we shouldn't be worried about, um, about that, uh, about the fact that the definition is implicit. 
Um, and so, so this is an implicit definition of the tightness. And then we know that once we have the tightness, we can figure out, you know, what is um, the unemployment rate in the economy. And so you remember that we can compute u, the unemployment rate that's predicted by the model. That's going to be equal to s divided by s plus f of theta. So once I have my tightness, I can figure out my unemployment rate. And then I can make sure that I get these properties that the unemployment rate has large fluctuation, is counter cyclical. Um, I could also um, get the, the vacancy rate, so that's very easy, because the vacancy rate V is just so this is not theta. the vacancy rate V is just theta times U of theta. Okay, so once I have theta, I can figure out what is uh, U of theta, and then I can get the vacancy rate. V of theta. Okay? Um, and so, for instance, what's that? I can make sure that I have a negative relationship between U and V, um, so that I can, uh, my model describe, um, describe a beverage curve. Okay? Um, so then I can really uh, start working and, uh, and making sure that the model um, describes the labor market accurately.